Hello, my name is Jeremy, this is Red Beans Recording, and today we're looking at the Noodle Box. First of all, this thing's called Noodle Box. Noodle Box. Noodle Box. So what is it? Well, they call it a serendipity sequencer. Um, it's a little sequencer. It's a four channel sequencer and um, it's really fun. And the first way we're going to explore it is with the Make Noise Zero Coast as our sound source and thing we're gonna modulate and the uh, poly digit doing some effects. We're not gonna modulate the digit. We're just gonna use it to make things sound better. Let's get started. If I hit run, you will see the noodle box start to move. See the little thing at the bottom? Now, I need to start entering notes to get anything to happen here. So I have uh, the CV out for A channel going to the one volt per octave of the O coast. And I have gate on channel one going out to gate of the O coast. The two things that you need to get the O coast to start making sounds. So what I'm gonna do is hold CV and I'm gonna turn this knob and you're gonna see some notes appear. See those notes? Isn't that cool? And you can see that uh, they're demonstrating that we are probably in a C major scale. When I have one of these notes selected, let's just do a, a low C for now. I can then move over and each one of these little boxes represents like a, uh, a 16th note or a unit of time. In this case, it's a 16th note. So let's make a little basic pattern so you can get a sense of what's noodling here. Noodle, 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 noodle. And the noodle box is cool because um, one of the things it does is automatically creates gate signals for each one of these note events. This little bottom bar here, uh, the highlights represent gate signals. And you can actually create gate signals that aren't directly related to a note event on here, which is very useful for things like drums and stuff like that. Um, or just triggering like, uh, you know, the slope envelope in the O coast. So uh, I can hit run and this will play. I can also hold down CV and run. And it will play from the beginning. Is it just me or is that delay like hell off? All right, so we created a simple sequence with some one volt proactive uh, pitch out and some gate events. So what can we do with this now? Well, uh, there's a couple little fun things that this can do. I can add more notes over here if I want. Let's just go ahead and add some more. What you'll see, besides my fingerprints on this, is that uh, when I hit run, we're just working on that little area down there. But I can change that. I can set a loop point anywhere. And that's not all. So I've been going forward. I can also loop backwards. And you can see now that we're running backwards. So you can create, God, man, my thing's a mess. I got hairs, I got fingerprints. You can create these little, little extra loops here and there, wherever you want. Isn't that cool? And then of course I can go for the whole length if I want to, 32 steps. The other things that we can do is um, if we hold Rand down, we can transpose this randomly down or up. If we hold CV and Rand, we can transpose it up and down. What's the other thing that we can do? Is it gate and rand? Uh, yeah, now we have access to probability. So uh, if I go here, I can turn the probability on these up and down and we will start to get, you can hear some of those notes kind of sometimes not hitting. Probability is a really, really good thing to have. I can hold clear and clear the whole sequence, which is nifty. So uh, let's go ahead and make a little loop. Um, one of the things that you should notice is that uh, the changes on the noodle box, like I'm holding a loop now, um, they're not gonna take effect until I let go, which is actually kind of cool. So let's go ahead and set this loop up here and just make some notes. Actually, before we make some notes, let's go talk about scale modes. So. Um, you can actually set these tracks up in a variety of ways. Um, when you're in these menus, if you hold CV, you can switch between like pitch, mod, and offset, which is pretty neat. We'll get into those shortly. You can actually change the voltage amount 
um, which is really, really cool for the mod things. So one volt per octave is going to be for pitch, but we can make some uh, changes for the mod thing and actually uh, scale our, our modulation voltages. We can transpose in here. And let's see what else. Slu, this is really cool. We'll get into that in just a second. I'm trying to find the, the scales. I have to hit function and layer. So here are all the scales that we can adhere to. Um, let's try, let's see, I think Mixolydian is going to be a minor scale. So let's try that. And you can set the bass note um, to whatever you want, which is cool. Like you can set it to uh, D, C, A, whatever note you want. You can change the, uh, the, the tonic note. Okay, cool. So let's go back in here and look at uh, slew. So slew is a uh, sort of a portamento. It's going to slide between the pitches of the notes, but you can change it to ties. And let's see if I remember how to do this. I think you hold down gate. And when you hold down gate, you can create a tie. So I can choose to slew only a couple notes. Isn't that cool? So you can see the little lights down here sort of get brighter as I enable a tie for each little section, which is just a really cool idea. All right, so let's see if there's anything else I want to talk about in here. We have done some slew. Um, we have transposed. Let's start adding some mod channels to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take CVB out. What should we plug it into? How about, I can't remember if this is the one that changes the balance or this one. Let's find out, shall we? Let's go into layer two, and you can switch between the four, uh, four layers by holding down layer and going uh, A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, four, excuse me. So now we're in layer two. Let's go ahead and switch this to mod. So now it's gonna send out modulation voltages as opposed to one volt per octave pitch voltages. And let's do a sequence. And we may not hear anything because I think I may have gotten the input wrong. All right. Let's give this a real wide range so we can really hear it. Now you can hear this CV is modulating the balance between this and this. And guess what? You can loop this too. Isn't that cool? So you can automatically change your modulation sequences on the fly. You can noodle them. Let's go for overtone on this next sequence. So layer three, layer mod. And that's not all. So now you can hear that the overtone is being modulated, which is pretty cool. If we took this out, really hear that overtone being modulated by that CV sequence. So remember how we could slew the pitches? We can slew this too. Let's go down. Can you hear the difference? Maybe if we unplug this again. Stepped. Smooth.
And we can choose to scale the voltage, which is pretty cool. Could technically transpose the voltage. Uh, what I wanted to show off was uh, using ties in modulation. I can now slew only portions of that modulation, which is really, really cool. And of course, we can choose to only loop a portion. So those are kind of the basics of what you can do with a noodle box. What else could we do with this? Well, we have another gate channel. We have three more gate channels. Those are gonna come more into play when we plug this thing into a bigger system. And uh, by the way, it will do sync and you can send a reset out via aux or get reset in, which is super useful. I actually did not realize that when I uh, just bought a clock divider in order to divide the clock to hook it up to uh, Steppy, the IntelliGel Steppy, I didn't realize I could send a, a reset out via aux. So very, very useful for um, hooking it up to other systems. I've hooked this up to the Digitact via the MIDI, and I have synced it to Eurorack via the Rover Sync. So pretty goddamn cool. I want a smaller cable. Let's grab gate two and use it to trigger the slope. So that's going to give us another envelope, basically. And then we can take this, take the slope out, and put it into multiply. And get another sequence. Technically, we have another gate signal, but I don't really know what we would do with it. You know what we could do with it? We could take clock out and feed it into the tempo of the uh, of the zero coast. Let's try that. So uh, the tempo can be adjusted, or the clock can be adjusted in here. You can set it to values of 16, I think 24 pulses per quarter note. So whatever works best for you. Um, we, it looks like we're getting 16th notes here. So our little woggle is going to be uh, 16th notes, which you know that's fine. That's, what could we do with this? We kind of like did everything, didn't we? Well, that's fucking cool. We just bypassed the contour as the um, contour section as the envelope for this, and now uh, we're just using 16th note clock off of this to trigger the random sample and hold thing. If we took this and put it in gate 3, now the clock is being defined by our modulation channel on 3, so we're getting a sort of a relationship between the different modulation things going on. And of course, if I loop this differently, I'll get a different output here because the clock's getting re-triggered differently. The Zero Coast just sounds so goddamn good. It's kind of insane. That'll do. That'll do. So there are some really interesting modes in here for uh, combining the channels. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be able to do that with, with our setup right here, but we're going to give it a try. So if I go into layer two, for instance, and I go into layer and I go to mix, there are modes here that will mask and mix the individual sequences together. So right now, our one volt per octave Right now, our one volt per octave pitch sequence coming out of A is being added to um, to sequence two, which is a modulation thing. So if you listen, 
much more mellow because the voltage that's feeding that particular modulation is lower. If I turn this on, it goes up because what's basically happening is this sequence that is triggering our pitch is now being added to the voltage of the sequence that is B, playing with our balance over here. So that's pretty goddamn cool. What other thing can we do here? We can do mask. So now the events of those two sequences are going to mask each other. So if we go over to sequence three, but this is more easy to hear if we're doing two pitch sequences. So here's sequence two. I set it to be uh, eighth notes instead of, um, or quarter notes instead of a 16th note thing. So we have this long sequence and I've turned up the decay on the zero coast all the way. Now, let's go back into layer and change our mix mode to mask and hear what happens. Now we can hear sequence A masking sequence B. The two are interacting with each other. So we can take that all the way down and stack sequences to mask or add to each other, either through modulation or through pitch or a combination of both. And through looping and other choices, you can get constantly evolving sequences that you sort of have some fun control over. gate out of sequence one and see what we can do with it. So what did we just do? Well, we still have our one volt for octave sequence that we don't hear necessarily coming out of A. We've taken that one volt per octave sequence and we've used it as a modulation sequence going into the overtone. So that sequence is still masking uh, one volt per octave sequence B. And then we did some trickery with the gates where we took the one volt per octave sequence gate, then we took the gate from our first sequence that we're not really hearing, but is being used as a mask, and we put it into the trig for our slope. And we broke the connection coming out of what normally would be contour into the dynamic section, our envelope, and we're using a whole nother CV lane on modulation to affect the time, the rise and the fall of this. So we're just getting a kind of a cool multiple gate envelope sequence going on, which is just really cool, I guess.
So that's fun. I know there are a few options out there for sequencers that um, you can pair with a small system, but I don't know. <laughs> this this little combo right here is just like making me so happy. Do we really even need to hear this in relation to a bigger system? I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for a few modules to arrive, and uh, you know, if there's more to this video, you'll see what goes on with that. Um, but yeah, the noodle box man, what a fun little friend. Uh, what a fun. Fun. Little friend. Do you have any fun noodle box tips? I know this is probably uh, not in everyone's hands yet, but um, I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. Uh, also, I would love to tacitly recommend this to anyone who's looking for a um, very small, relatively inexpensive uh, hardware sequencer for a small modular system. Um, it's great. <laughs> it's really fun. It's really engaging. Um, and uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff under the hood. Probably a lot more uh, firmware features to come too, just considering like it's a pretty brand new device. And um, I know the maker is extremely uh, invested in making sure that his project is just the best it can be. And it shows a lot of really smart stuff going on in this. So yeah, thanks for watching. My name's Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. And uh, Noodle. Box. Noodle. Box.